This is Gary Penny, also known as GP. Gary used to be my old group Iron Man account her normal account over a year ago and in that process I cleaned out the entire account leaving Gary with zero GP to his name. But as they say the comeback is always greater than the setback so in this series Gary Penny will rebuild with the ultimate end goal of achieving a max cash stack. In the first episode of this series, we completed Desert Treasure 2 and obtained the Old Toll Ring from Vardorvis. But we never ended up exploring what the other three bosses of the quest had to offer. Duke Sosilus, the Whisperer, and the Leviathan. All of these share a loot table of Virtus armor pieces, all worth millions of GP. As well as the pieces of the Soul Reaper Axe, worth nothing on their own, but over 300 million if combined. But most importantly, they all drop one massively valuable ring each with a sort of a bad luck protection to them, making you less likely to get unlucky when hunting them. Now basically, if the ring has a drop rate of 1 in 600, you will have to roll a 1 in 200 invisible ring piece 3 times to get it on the third roll. There is no indications when you have successfully hit a ring piece, but each time you do, the drop rate of the actual ring goes from 1 in 600, 1 in 400, to eventually 1 in 200, with one piece missing. So in this video, we are hunting down every single ring missing from these three bosses and we are starting off with the whisperer when it comes to gear setup for the whisperer this is what we're going to go with it's not the most optimal setup but it's definitely good enough i've spent some decent money on the accursed scepter and the venator bow as well as a virtus mask as they're all very useful for this boss especially the weapons the bellator vestige which is the item you make the ring with is one in 512 from the whisperer so let's get into it and the reason why we have the Accursed Scepter is to use its special attack to lower the boss's magical defense. As I'm using a Trident of the Swamp, which is not very strong, this is going to help out a lot when it comes to the DPS. And the reason why we have the Venator Bow is for the Ghost Phase, where you have to kill all of these ghosts to deal a large amount of damage to the boss and also gain some prayer points back. In this clip in the background, I am absolutely messing everything up, as you can see, but later on I'll show you guys how to actually do it correctly. And we have the first KC of the grind. Let's see what we're going to be getting. Yo, no way. We actually get this. Oh, that's so good for the grind. And it's not super rare to get that, but just getting it on the first KC is ridiculously good. That is the teleport right to this area. And we're going to be using that on the Ring of Shadows after this first trip. Okay, so this is me not messing up the ghost phase. For the ones that lined up three in a row, you have to attack one on the edges, and for the triple ones, you attack the one in the middle. And if you do that correctly, you will actually kill all of them just in time to get 75 damage on the boss and also regain some health and prayer. Before we continue the Whisperer grind, once again, this video is sponsored by the officially licensed by Jagex, RuneScape-themed LED lights, mouse mats, and recently added plushies over at Creator Crafted. All of these new plushies look so good, with my favorite being the Baron plush, which I guess is kind of on theme for this video. And you can even vote on what future plushies you would like to see added to the store. Now, if plushies is not your thing, their LED light collection and mouse mats most certainly will be. And now is a great time to look into these because Creator Crafted just announced May's collection release up for pre-orders. Wise Old Man, Dragon Warhammer, and Tumikan's Warden LED lights and a 40s Colosseum mouse mat, which, I mean, just look at it. It looks so good. All Creator Crafted products run on a limited stock, however, so if you want to make sure you get your hands on these before they're gone, click on the link in the description and use code ALONE10 to get 10% off any purchase, as well as free shipping in the US on orders above $150, which is also highly discounted internationally. I have one of their products, the Dragon Medhelm, and I'm waiting for the TOA mouse mat to get here and I can't wait to use it. Thank you so much to Creative Crafter for sponsoring this video, and let's get back into hunting some rings. Oh ho ho! Let's go! Look at that! 550,000 GP from a normal drop. That is another benefit to this boss. The normal drops is extremely profitable. And that is the end of the first trip. We got 8kc in this one as we started with 1 from just completing the Desert Treasure 2 quest. So let's have a price check. Of course, most of that is in battle staves, but 753k. We're definitely going to have some trips that are way more profitable than that, though. We have now added the teleport to the ring. Let's go ahead and use it to the Lazar Under City, and we are teleported right to this area. And after that, you can just run to this teleporter, click on the cathedral, and you are right at the ball. So very quick banking. Oh no, we have a chromium ingot already on 12kc. That is actually not a very good sign, because that is the same drop rate as a ring piece, 
place. But when you get something on the rare drop table like a Virtus piece or Chromium ingot, that means you hit the rate for a ring piece but did not get it. Oh, there we go. I was actually waiting to get the first clue scroll. I think this is a good time to talk about how clues is going to work for this episode. You can get every single clue from easy to elite from these bosses. I'm going to get one of each from every single boss and then complete them after I've got the ring from them. Oh my god. Yep. Wow. That is why you do not go in melee range against the Whisperer. You're going to meet a very swift death. <gasps> oh! No way! No! I got so baited! Okay, that was a very fast kill. I thought the combat achievement, however, was like the pet or something. Okay, well, you know what? I'll take the fast KC. 995,000 GP for Awakener's Orbs. These have gone down in price so much since last time I was doing these bosses. But these are 1 in 34.5 from the Whisperer. Not super rare. Good money. No way we got the best drop in the game. Bronze Long Swords. Ah, 76k! Another Chromium ingot. It's even gone down in price by 24,000 GP. That's just sad, honestly. But while the Chromium ingot is going down in price, the Awakener orbs are actually going up in price. We now have them having the red beam instead of the uh, purple one. And with this, we are now hitting the first big milestone of the grind, 100 Whisperers defeated. Right there in the chat, you can see it. And this is all the loot that we've got. The loot tracker is unfortunately just slightly off, but all the items are there. And we have got six Awakeners orbs, which is actually quite a lot about the raid. Almost double the raid, but I won't say no to that. Thank you for the money. That is a good drop to explain the perfect kill mechanic, 10 dragon plate skirts. When you defeat the Whisperer and don't screw up any of the main mechanics, you get 50% more loot by doing a perfect kill. So if I mess something up, I would get 7 dragon plate skirts, if not, I get 10. So performing well on this boss actually will make you more money. I was contemplating on showing the live commentary for this clip, but honestly, it was just silence mostly, because I was just in awe of what just happened. So let's go ahead and explain what actually happened in this clip. I killed the Whisperer, Awakener's Orb dropped, and then I was going to click on my chat, but instead clicked on leave the room. And the way the Whisperer works is that as soon as you click on that, you just instantly leave. There's no travel time, no nothing, and I lost the orb. Which is kind of a crazy mechanic, honestly, that you instantly leave, but that's how it works. Oh my god, died right when the boss does. When this happens, by the way, the loot tracker is going to be a bit messed up. It counts as a kill, but as I didn't get the loot, the loot tracker does not add one. So every time that happens, we are one KC behind on the tracker. Okay, we have the first collection log slot of the grind, the Shadow Quartz. This is an upgrade to the Ancient Scepter, which I do not actually have from the Phantom Muspa just yet. The drop rate says 1 in 218, but it's actually a bit more common than that because the drop rate does increase over time. I did not want this video to become repetitive just showing a bunch of the same drops, but I have to show you guys this. Look how many Awakener orbs we have got so far. The money from this is ridiculous. It's such a good extra income from all the Desert Treasure 2 bosses we're going to be doing. Okay, I just have to show you guys this. Look at my clan chat. A bit of a shout out to the clan. Someone got Smolander, massive shout out, got third age plate legs worth 80 million from an elite clue scroller. That is like one in 300,000. So congrats to you. I feel like it was worth a shout out. The two biggest costs for this grind is all the restore potions and the charges in my trident. I have so far used 15,000 charges and we just added another 11.5k. I don't want to add too many because you never know when you're going to get the ring. And for the other bosses, I'm not using magic. After this whisper, we have now been here for a very long time. We just hit 400kc and I have been calculating how many kills an hour we're getting with this setup and it's around 15. And that means we've nearly spent 27 hours at the Whisperer at this point. And we're still not even on the drop rate of the ring yet. I actually found out that there is a small trick you can do. If you barrage this rat in Ferox Enclave, you hit 98 magic. I really hoped that, especially on the Whisperer being the slowest one to kill, I was going to get lucky, but that is now the drop rate of the Bellator Vestige, 512 KC. And of course, we haven't seen it yet, but we should be very close because of the drop rate mechanic on these rings. So let's hopefully see it fairly soon. Oh my god! Oh my god! 595kc! Yes! Let's go! We have the Bellator Vestige! Oh, I was getting so tired of this boss. We're like, what? 
What am I, like 40 hours into this grind? There we finally go. The Bellator ring is an upgrade to the Warrior's ring, which is only like 40k. So I had to buy one of those to then use a chisel on it to make the icon. And there we have it, the Bellator icon. Let's use it on the furnace with three chromium ingots that we actually got from the boss itself. So I didn't have to buy them. And there we go, that is the Bellator ring. 6 milli strength, 20 slash. And examining it, it's nearly 50 million GP. Of course, very good profits, but kind of sad I didn't end up getting any Virtus pieces. Of course, before we sell all the loot in the loot tab, which is 124 million on the tracker, we do have all the clue scrolls to open. So let's quickly go through all of them and start with the easy one going all the way up to the elite one. Easy one is 89k, not too bad. Medium, 70k. Hard one is 129k. And the last one, elite, is... A master clue scroll, but it's 91k. That is pretty atrocious. Let's do the master. And there we go. That is the master completed. Let's go ahead and see what we get from this one. 255k and a Shazian hood. Very nice. After selling all the loot from the Whisperer, including the 25 million from the Awakener's Orbs and the 50 million from the Bellator Ring, we gained a 123.8 million cash pile from just the Whisperer, pushing our bank value from starting this episode at around 500 million all the way to 631 million bank value. And we still have two more bosses to go. Before we head into the next grind, there's actually one small thing I want to get done, and that is actually unlock the new herb patch that was released with the Var a more content release. Adding one patch to the rotation that I'm doing when I basically have time to get some extra money from herb runs is going to be extremely beneficial. And there's only really one requirement to get this done, so let's just go ahead and do it right now. Luckily, Children of the Sun, even though it's a very new quest, is on the quest helper now, so this took literally like five minutes to do, and that is now access to Varlamore. The way you get to Varlamore, of course, is traveling by bird, so let's go ahead and do that real quick, and I don't really know a good way to quickly get to the herb patch. I'm pretty sure there is a teleport to Varlamore, but for that you have to be on the normal spellbook, but over here is the herb patch. I'm not really sure what the fastest way of getting there is going to be. But here we go, the new herb patch has been unlocked and we can now plant another seed. And there's actually only one herb patch I'm not using, which is on Mostly Harmless. But for that, I think I need like an elite diary. So we now have everything that doesn't have that requirement. But it's now time for the second boss of this video, the Leviathan. This is my gear and inventory setup for this boss with the notable two new items I've bought. is the Crystal Helmet and the Web Weaver Bow. Of course, Crystal Helmet being an upgrade for the Bow of Faradina, which I'm going to be using for this grind. And the Web Weaver Bow becomes an absolute monster at the final phase of this fight, and I'll show you guys that in the next clip. The drop rate of the Venator Vestige from this boss is 1 in 768. And this is why we use the Web Weaver Bow for this fight. At the final phase, this orb spawns that gives insane accuracy and damage, and when using the Web Weaver spec, you can see how much damage this is actually doing to the boss. Two specs is pretty much always going to finish off the boss, and for the first kill, we have Uncut Rubies. Not too bad, and the kill time was 1.58, which is actually a lot faster than the Whisper, almost double the speed. As it should be delivered on 25kc Scar Tablet, we have the teleport unlocked, and now we can actually bring the Ring of Shadows. Oh, very unexpected. Already on 79kc, we have the Quartz drop, of course the Collection Log slot, but this one specifically, the Smoke one, I don't think it has really any good use at all. Not really interested in showing all of these orbs, but I do want to mention that all of them have different drop rates from the different bosses. This one is 1 in 53.6. Oh, 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 look at that! That looks so good! Perfect kill on the best possible drops. Onyx Ball Tips, one point. 1 million. I don't mind if I do. Oh my god! Yo! We actually got a Leviathan's Lure! This is the item I was talking about in the intro, the Soul Reaper Axe part. Now, unfortunately, this is the same drop rate basically as the ring, but I don't really have any use for it, because this is only one of four pieces, and you need all of them to do anything. And with this kill, we are now halfway done with the Leviathan grind, at least for the on-drop rate of the ring. And this is all the loot that we've got so far. Unfortunately, no Virtus piece at all from either the Whisperer or the Leviathan, and the money from this boss is actually worse than the Whisperer. So hopefully we can see a Virtus piece, or just get lucky and get the ring very soon. And with that medium, we got the last clue scroll from this boss. We now have one of each, but also have a look at my XP counter. We have got 
4.2 million ranged. That's like a third of a 99. And on that note as well, we just hit 20 million hit points experience. This boss is just spamming you with experience. But it's kind of crazy to think about that I started this series on episode 1 just 4 episodes ago with a 98 hit points. And I've killed so many things in this series that we're already at 20 million. We are actually lucky! 711 KC, the Venator Vestige. We are done. Not a single Virtus piece again on this one. This is all the loot from this grind. Let's go and make a ring. We have the icon. Let's go ahead and smelt the Venator ring. I'm not actually sure how much this is worth, but I think it should be worth more than the Bellator ring. So let's have a look. Examine. 56 million. It has been going down in price quite a lot, but still 6 million more than the Bellator ring. And of course, before we sell all the loot, let's go ahead and open all the caskets that we collected. Easy one being worth... 2,000 GP, massive, 31,000 for the medium, and a master as well. I'm going to do that after opening all of these, 130k and 124k. If I don't get third age, I'm reporting every single one of you who is watching this video. I guess you're all reported. The Awakener's Orbs and the Venator Ring has collectively sold for roughly 65.7 million, it seems, for 93 million overall loot from the Leviathan. Let's put everything into the bank and see the current value, almost 700 million. Before we head into the final boss of this video, which is Duke Sosilus, we are going to be hitting 80 Herb Lore, because that speeds up the fight by quite a bit. And for that, we had to spend 7 million GP to buy these potions, which is honestly a pretty small amount of money for how much faster it makes the Duke. We have a problem. Them. Please, guys, get Sir Pugger on this. What is going on? What am I looking at? These all have to be bots, right? 100%. Call Sir Pugger. We need him. And there we go. That is 80 herb lore achieved. Let's go ahead and look into what gear we're going to be using for Duke Sosilus. Duke Sosilus is defeated by using melee, and this is the gear setup and inventory we're going with. And surprisingly, the zombie axe is actually pretty good here. According to the wiki, it is the third best weapon you can actually use. And unfortunately, I don't have the budget to buy a 1 billion scythe of Vitter or a 300 million soul reaper axe. So, zombie axe it is. The drop rate of the ring we're hunting this time, the Magus ring, is 1 in 720. 20. Extremely scuffed kill. I definitely didn't do that as fast as I possibly could. Four minutes. I am going to speed that up quite a lot because I was also AFKing a bit in the prep, which is actually included in the kill time overall. You know, the biggest problem here is going to be accuracy because the defense of this boss is fairly high and that's why I also have a Bandus God Sword. But even when hitting that with the zombie axe, I don't have that high accuracy. So I think I'm actually going to swap my light bearer for a Bellator Ring, which gives 20 slash bonus and also 6 strength bonus. So let's say goodbye to the light bearer and spend some money on a massive ring upgrade. Let's buy back the ring we sold from the Whisper, which has actually been going down in price a bit. We got it for 46 million and I think it's, we sold it for easily over 50 million. But let's look at the stats. 6 strength bonus and 20 slash. So if we go into here, we have 156 slash and if we equip this, we have 176. Okay, that definitely felt a lot faster, but I'm not sure how much faster. Okay, two minutes and five seconds. I was kind of lucky with the BGS hits though, so I'm not sure how consistent it's going to be, but uh, regardless, it's going to be a great upgrade for the grind. There it is, the Frozen Tablet on 14kc. Always nice to get these, of course, as soon as you possibly can, and that is now going to finish off my entire Ring of Shadows. So let's go ahead and add the tablet to the ring and finish off the entirety of all the teleports. If we now click teleport, we have all of them unlocked. So let's go ahead and try the latest one, the Gorok Dungeon, which is actually extremely useful as well for the Phantom Muspa. Of course, we have the obligatory Chromium Ingot. Very lucky this time on 28kc. This one is 1 in 240. I'm down bad. I need help. It took 66 KC to get the best standard drop you can from Duke Sosilus. Unfortunately, not a perfect kill, so this can go all the way up to 7 Dragon Plate Legs. And of course, you always get this one when your inventory is full. I guess in the theme of completing things with the Ring of Shadows, now we also have every single Quartz collected from these bosses. So if I ever want to make these special Ancient Scepters, we now have all of them. Oh no! Look at the price of these Awakeners orbs! They started this video at the Whisper at over a million, and now they're 823k. We should see quite a lot of them from this boss. They are 1 in 48.5 from this one. 
I was kind of curious to see how unlikely it is to not get a single Virtus piece while getting all the three rings and getting one Virtus piece, just any from the boss, is the same as getting the ring. So on every single boss that I do go for a ring, I should also get one Virtus piece. So getting none from all the three bosses would be a three times unlucky drop rate. So I put in a 1 in 100 and then I did 300 kills just as I test and then getting zero items would be a... 95% chance that I actually do get a Virtus P, so 5% chance that I do not get it. So if we go into our random number generator here and then put in 20, if you can now guess the correct number that lands right here, you would be just as unlucky as I've been so far. Of course, we haven't completed Duke Sussulus just yet, so I could also get a Virtus P still. But let's generate and see if you would be just as unlucky as I've been so far. Did you guess 5? If you did, congrats! You are also not getting a single Virtus piece from 3 bosses. No way that happens right after the last clip I recorded. Yes, we actually finally got a Virtus piece. And of course, yeah, looking on the collection log, that is the only one we already had two of from Vardorvis. But who says no to 31 million GP? And after that Virtus row bottom drop, we have now hit roughly the halfway point of the grind, and uh, this is all the loot that we've got. Of course, pretty much half of the value is just from the row bottoms, but at this point, I feel like I kind of deserved one. The melee experience from Duke Sosilus is definitely not as good as the ranged experience we were getting from the Leviathan, but that is still enough to hit 98 strength. And honestly, I hope I don't get 99 strength on this grind, because then I would have to be really unlucky for the vestige. What? No, why do we get the Virtus mask? All the Virtus pieces are just as rare. And now that I'm catching up on these items, I'm getting the least valuable one. It was a collection log slot though, however, but uh, the Virtus top is so much more valuable. So I did some calculations and we are now hitting the drop rate for the Vestige on Duke Sosilus and I'm getting roughly around 18 kills an hour. The Whisperer I was getting 15 and the Leviathan around 20. Adding all of these times together, we have now been here for roughly 120 hours just grinding these Desert Treasure 2 bosses. Oh my... <laughs> Oh, we got the Baron Pets. Of course we did. Uh, it's 1 in 2,500, a lot more rare than the ring, of course. I've been doing this boss for like the past 4 days, 10 hours every single day. That's not what I want to see, but oh, it's so cute. We are now at 848 kill counts, and we are actually forced to recharge our Blood Amulet and also our Serpentine Helmet at this point. I was kind of hoping I didn't have to recharge my Blood Fury because it's kind of expensive, but it's down at 500 charges, so it kind of has to be done, and I don't know how long I have left on this grind. Could be a couple of hundred kills, could be just 10 kills, so... There it is, 10,000 more charges. And the Blood Amulet of Fury is good anyways for other grinds in the future, so it's not really just wasting it. I'm free! Yo! I feel like Dobby right now from Harry Potter. Magus Vestige finally on 970 KC. Oh, that's so good. We almost hit 99 strength. Look at the counter. We were so close, but not quite. Just look at this collection log. We never got the Eye of the Duke, which is a Soul Reaper axe piece, and never the Virtus top. Other than that, we got the pets. We got everything good. I wanted a bit more cozy of a furnace for the last ring. It looks like the fires of Mordor right here. Let's make the last ring, the Magus ring, which I actually think is the most valuable one. I guess it goes really well with the Tumic and Shadow and all that gear. So let's go ahead and examine it and see the actual value. 64.1 million GP. A good payout for a long grind. And as per usual, before we sell everything, we have the clue scrolls. Of course, we got one of each. Easy one being 6k. Medium one, 6k, not the best reward so far, 97k for the hard one and a collection of slots. Can we get a master? No, 75k. If you want to go for Blood Torva, I would highly recommend to buy the Awakener's Orbs right now because they are going down in price a lot, but let's collect all the big items for a overall cash pile of 173 million from the Duke, making it by far the most profitable out of all of them. And if we put this into the bank, we now have a 804 million bank. 
That actually means that regardless of all the supplies that we used in this video, we made 300 million profit in just one episode. In the next episode, we'll be mixing it up by testing a bunch of different money makers. Also remember to check out Creator Crafted with the link below as sponsors like these allow me to make these 100 plus hour grinds a bit more viable. But until next time guys, take care.